Here are some potential interview questions that you may be asked for an IT officer position. The interview questions as will depend on your specific experiences and qualifications. It is important to tailor your responses to the specific requirements of the role and the needs of the organization. I recommend taking the time to review the job description and requirements carefully, and considering how your skills and experiences align with what the employer is looking for. You should also be prepared to provide specific examples and anecdotes to illustrate your points and show how you have applied your skills and knowledge in previous roles. Can you describe your experience in the IT industry and how it has prepared you for this role? I can provide you with some general information about how experience in the IT industry can prepare an individual for an IT officer role. Experience in the IT industry can provide an individual with a strong foundation of technical skills and knowledge, as well as the ability to apply these skills in a professional setting. Working in the IT industry can also provide opportunities to learn about the latest technologies and trends, as well as to develop problem-solving and critical thinking skills. In addition, experience in the IT industry can provide an individual with the ability to communicate effectively with technical and non-technical stakeholders, and to work well as part of a team. All of these skills and experiences can be valuable in an IT officer role, where the individual will be responsible for providing technical support, implementing new technologies, and managing IT systems and resources. How do you stay up to date with the latest technologies and trends in the field? If you are an IT professional looking to stay up to date with the latest technologies and trends in the field, there are several ways you can do so. Some options include reading industry news and blogs. Many websites and publications offer regular updates on the latest technologies and trends in the IT industry. Attending conferences and events. There are many conferences and events focused on the IT industry that can provide an opportunity to learn about new technologies and network with other professionals. Taking online courses or earning additional certifications. Online courses and certifications can provide a structured way to learn about new technologies and stay up to date with industry best practices. Networking with other professionals. Connecting with other IT professionals, either through professional organizations or online communities, can be a good way to stay informed about new technologies and trends. Can you provide examples of how you have successfully implemented new technologies in a previous role? I can provide some general information about the process of successfully implementing new technologies in an organization. Some key considerations when implementing new technologies include identifying the business needs and goals that the technology is intended to address. It is important to understand the problems or challenges that the technology is intended to solve, as well as the goals that the organization hopes to achieve through its implementation. Conducting research and due diligence. It is important to carefully research and evaluate different technologies to determine which one will best meet the organization's needs. This may involve reviewing product literature, talking to vendors and other experts, and conducting pilot projects or tests. Developing a plan for implementation. Once a technology has been selected, it is important to develop a plan for how it will be implemented. This may involve establishing timelines, allocating resources, and identifying potential challenges or risks. Communicating with stakeholders. It is important to keep stakeholders informed about the implementation process, including any changes or disruptions that may be caused by the new technology. Providing training and support. Ensuring that users are trained on the new technology and have access to support can be critical to its successful implementation. Monitoring and evaluating the technology's performance. It is important to regularly assess the technology's performance and make any necessary adjustments to ensure that it is meeting the organization's needs. How do you prioritize tasks and manage your workload effectively? Effective task prioritization and workload management are important skills for any IT professional. Some strategies that can help you prioritize tasks and manage your workload effectively include creating a to-do list or using a task management tool. Having a clear list of tasks and deadlines can help you stay organized and focused. Identifying your most important tasks. It can be helpful to identify the tasks that are most important or have the highest impact, and prioritize these first. Breaking larger tasks into smaller, more manageable chunks. This can help make tasks feel more achievable and allow you to make progress on them more consistently. Allocating sufficient time for each task. It is important to be realistic about how long tasks will take, and to allocate sufficient time for each one. Seeking help or delegating tasks when necessary. 
It is okay to ask for help or to delegate tasks when you are unable to handle everything on your own. Taking breaks and managing your energy. It is important to take breaks and manage your energy levels to maintain focus and productivity. Reviewing and adjusting your workload regularly. Regularly reviewing your workload and making adjustments as needed can help ensure that you can manage your tasks effectively. Can you describe a situation where you had to provide technical support to a non-technical user and how you approached it? When providing technical support to a non-technical user, it is important to be patient and to communicate clearly and concisely. Some specific strategies that may be helpful when providing technical support to a non-technical user include asking clarifying questions. It can be helpful to ask questions to better understand the user's needs and the problem they are experiencing. Using non-technical language. Avoid using technical jargon or acronyms, and try to explain concepts in simple, easy to understand terms. Providing step-by-step -step instructions. Break down complex tasks into small, easy to follow steps, and provide clear instructions for each step. Using visual aids. Diagrams, screenshots, or other visual aids can help explain technical concepts or processes. Being patient. It is important to be patient and to allow the user the time they need to understand the information you are providing. Offering additional resources. If the user is still having difficulty after you have provided support, you may want to suggest additional resources such as online tutorials or user guides that may be helpful. How do you approach troubleshooting hardware and software issues? Effective troubleshooting of hardware and software issues is an important skill for any IT professional. Here are some general steps that can be helpful when approaching troubleshooting tasks. Identify the problem. The first step in troubleshooting is to determine the problem. This may involve talking to the user who is experiencing the issue, reviewing error messages or logs, or running diagnostic tests. Gather information. Once you have a clear understanding of the problem, it is important to gather as much information as possible about the hardware or software involved, including details such as the version, configuration, and any recent changes. Develop a hypothesis. Based on the information you have gathered, try to develop a hypothesis about what might be causing the problem. This can help guide your troubleshooting efforts. Test your hypothesis. To test your hypothesis, you may need to try different troubleshooting steps or tools such as running diagnostic tests, reviewing log files, or making configuration changes. Evaluate the results. After testing your hypothesis, it is important to evaluate the results and determine whether the problem has been resolved. If the problem has been resolved, the troubleshooting process is complete. If the problem persists, you may need to go back to step 3 and develop a new hypothesis. Document your process. It is important to document your troubleshooting process including the steps you took and the results you obtained. This can be helpful for future reference, as well as for sharing information with other team members. How do you handle difficult customer or client interactions, and how do you work to resolve their issues? Dealing with difficult customers or clients can be challenging, but it is an important part of providing technical support. Here are some strategies that can be helpful when handling difficult customer or client interactions. Stay calm and professional. It is important to remain calm and professional, even in challenging situations. This can help to de-escalate the situation and maintain a constructive dialogue. Listen actively. Make an effort to listen to the customer or client, and try to understand their perspective and the problem they are experiencing. Empathize. Show that you understand their concerns and are sympathetic to their situation. Apologize. If appropriate, consider apologizing for any inconvenience or frustration the customer or client has experienced. Offer a solution. Try to come up with a solution that addresses the customer or client's needs and resolves their issue. Follow up. After resolving the issue, make sure to follow up with the customer or client to ensure that their needs have been met. It is important to remember that while not all customer or client interactions can be resolved to everyone's satisfaction, Making an effort to understand and address their concerns can go a long way towards building trust and maintaining positive relationships. Can you describe your experience with budget and resource management, and how you have successfully allocated resources to achieve organizational goals? Effective budget and resource management is an important skill for any IT professional. Some key considerations when managing budgets and resources include Identifying the organization's goals and priorities it is important to understand the goals and priorities of the organization to effectively allocate resources. Assessing the availability of resources. 
it is important to carefully assess the availability of resources, including time, money, and personnel, to determine what is feasible. Setting clear budget and resource limits. Establishing clear budget and resource limits can help ensure that resources are used efficiently and effectively. Monitoring and tracking resource usage. Regularly monitoring and tracking resource usage can help identify any areas where resources may be wasted or misallocated, and allow for corrective action to be taken. Communicating with stakeholders. It is important to keep stakeholders informed about budget and resource management, and to involve them in the decision-making process when appropriate. Reviewing and adjusting plans regularly. Regularly reviewing and adjusting plans as needed can help ensure that resources are being used effectively to achieve organizational goals. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and follow this channel.